Hello there everybody, Sam's Trains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome to another review. Up today it's a brand new O-Gage Loco from Dapol. <laughs> good long while since I last reviewed an O-Scale Loco and certainly quite some time since I last reviewed one from Dapol, so this is something I'm really looking forward to. It's a brand new Loco, Dapol have only just released it and it is of course this, the LSWR B4 tank engine. And this will mean that Dapol now produces this Loco in two different scales because of course they also produce a double O scale version of this model as well. This one's quite a few years old now, but uh, yeah, it is the same class, which is quite interesting. In terms of value for money, on first glance, this seems to be quite the bargain, actually. The ROP is an oddly specific value of £232.88, which doesn't seem too bad. Yet, of course, at the retailers, you can get this for quite a discount from that price. So the price I paid was £213.78 from Hattons. And interestingly, that price is exactly double the price of a double O scale version of the model, which is quite pleasing, I think, because it's obviously double the scale. However, it's more than double the model. Obviously, you're doubling that scale across three dimensions, so it's more like eight times as much model for just double the cost. So that sounds like really, really good value. If you'd like to check out one of these locos, please feel free to use my affiliate links in the description. There's quite a few different liveries on offer from Dapol, sound fitted, DCC fitted, lots of choice, so check them out if you want to. Today, though, I'm looking at this one. Let's get it out, see what it's like. So usually Dapol's O-Scale Locos are exquisite and great value, and I'm hoping that this one is going to be the same. It certainly looks like it's going to be great value. I have paid quite a lot more than I paid for this for some double O-Scale Locos, and presumably this is going to be heavier and more complex than those were, which is good. And speaking of the weight, man, this feels like a really heavy box, so hopefully this will be a decently heavy loco. In terms of its size, the B4 is a little bit shorter than, let's say, the Terrier, but it's also a little bit chunkier in its tanks and such, so hopefully there will have been some good opportunities here to add some decent weight to this model, but we'll see. Right, let me show you the end of the box then. So the one I have here is 7S-018-006. It is an LSWR B4 040 tank engine in the lined green and it's number 91. And that is LSWR green. Quite a lot of choice, like I say, in terms of livery, but for me, it had to be the LSWR. Front of the box, we've got a lovely line drawing, but it does not reveal what the loco looks like, at least not its livery. So let's open the lid for the very first time. Let's have a look at the brand new B4 from Dapol. So we've got a white foam, that's interesting. I'll lift this in just a second. First though, let's have a look at this handbook, which appears to be very nicely produced as always. Let's have a look at the first page. So a history of the B4, pause and read that if you'd like to. Let's have a look through here. Model specification, shall we have a quick look? So die cast metal chassis, that's great. Die cast wheels, motion and connecting rods. Rocking front axle for perfect running, I guess that means that it's compensated. Sprung buffers, very nice. All wheel pickup and bearings, a couple of different variations. Uh, gearbox for low speed performance, very nice. It's got a 21 pin socket in it. Toolless DCC decoder and speaker fitting. I'm hoping these instructions will tell us more about that. Diecast foot plate, what a great feature. Detailed body, oh, it's got a firebox flicker effect. Accessories and sound fitted models available, like I say, yeah. Okay, so there's a bit about unboxing. It looks like this is screwed to a plinth and I've had to deal with that before, so that's fair enough. Bit about accessories, maintenance. Looks like it's pretty much the standard maintenance. Fitting of accessories, that's useful. And it looks as though the smoke box door doesn't pop off like Dapol's double O scale models do. Looks like it actually opens up using its hinge, which is very, very cool. And then you've got a slide in PCB, it looks like. Possibly even with dual speakers on it. I bet that'll sound good, yeah, looks like it, yeah. It looks like you can fit two speakers in there if you want to. Very nice, a stereo locomotive. Right, sound features, sound functions rather. Um, yeah, loads of stuff about DCC. 
manufacturer's warranty. Okay, so as always from Dapol, it's a very comprehensive manual. I like that a lot, but I think now we need to take a look at the Loco herself. So let's see. Oh, gosh, straight away. Core, it does look lovely, doesn't it? Looks quite a bit different from my 00 scale version as well. Let's just bring that in. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously the same thing. I, I guess it's just the livery that makes them look so different. And I guess some of the detailing is different as well. And uh, yeah, they did mention that there's quite a bit of variation in the detailing. But let's pull this out and have a look. So we've got a small accessories bag here, which uh, for this loco at least seems to be just a vacuum pipe. Very nicely molded one, but just a vacuum pipe nevertheless. But that is all we've got. The instructions mention some sort of DCC fitting tool for pulling out the circuit board. Well, that isn't in here, so unless it's somewhere else, that's missing. But uh, yeah, I'm guessing I'm going to take this foam to begin with, just so that that doesn't get lost. Now then, let's pull this plinth out. Oh yeah. So you've actually got a beautiful plinth to display this logo on, if you want. Yeah, it's nice sort of transparent acrylic, not just some sort of black matte plastic that wouldn't look good on display. So yeah, this could actually be quite useful if you want to put it on the mantelpiece. Very, very nice indeed. But let's not talk about the plinth because that's uh, a little bit dull. Let's talk about the loco, which looks absolutely beautiful. Seems to weigh a lot. The livery application looks gorgeous. And I will show you that in much more detail in just a minute. Tons and tons of detail on this and finished off absolutely beautifully. Yeah, the quality of the finish here looks incredible. For 200 pounds, I, I really must say this seems like a great deal. So I'm going to take this off the plinth off camera, and that's because I will need to concentrate in order not to damage this. Then we'll have a much closer look at the loco and what appears to be all of its glorious detail. But first, let's have a little bit of background on the B4s in real life. The LSWR Class B4 was designed by William Adams and introduced to the railway in 1891. They were relatively small in numbers, as only 25 were built in total. They were used for station piloting and dock shunting, so generally light duties requiring a nimble locomotive. Notable features of the design include an internal coal bunker, I guess that's why it looks a little bit weird, because the back of the loco ends with the cab. You've got Stevenson valve gear hidden between the frames, in spite of having outside cylinders, which apparently is quite unusual, and a tiny wheelbase in order to better equip them for the tight radius curves found at the docks. Following the grouping of 1923, the Southern Railway continued to use the class on various docks and good yards, and the retirement of the class wouldn't begin until nationalisation in 1948, by which point the design was almost 60 years old. The final withdrawals took place in 1963, and only two examples remain under preservation today, and those two are Normandy and Granville. So there it is, up close and personal for you. Dapol's brand new LSWR B4 in O scale. And this model is amazing. I am blown away by what Dapol have been able to achieve here. The fact that they've been able to pull off such a high quality and intricately detailed model for such a low price is nothing short of mind blowing. And it's something that no other manufacturer is doing. If you wanted this kind of detail from a different manufacturer, any of them really, it's going to be more like double the price. Yet here's a lovely, lovely loco for just a hair over £200. So I say well done to Dapol and long may this continue. I wish them all of the success possible with this. Where to even begin? Well, let's talk about the weight because the weight of the double O B4 from Dapol was not that impressive. Looks lovely, doesn't feel that great in the hands. Not a lot to it, plastic running plate, weighs in at just 95 grams. Compare that with the O scale version and things are completely different. This thing weighs almost eight times more at 742 grams. Now bear in mind this loco is smaller than the Terrier and the 14XX that I've looked at from Dapol in the past and yet it is heavier than both of them. And that is largely thanks to the die cast running plate which is quite thick and chunky and sure enough made of metal. 
Most of the model is made of plastic, the sort of tanks, the boiler and such, but the weight is fantastic nevertheless, and also the chassis is die cast as well. I believe that the chimney might be made of metal too, that does feel quite metallic to the touch, it feels cold, so I'm thinking that could be metal as well. Either way though, the weight of this model is nothing short of impressive. Another fantastic aspect of this model is the decoration and finish. The finish is absolutely lovely, you've got a very very pleasing satin finish, really it almost looks like a museum piece, it is so so nicely finished. And the decoration and the printing and such is absolutely marvellous. So you've got the LSWR lettering as well as the running number on the side of the tanks, that looks lovely. The banding on the boiler is incredibly precise and I also really like the light green on the banding there. That looks great. You've got the sort of gold or copper coloured band at the front of the boiler or at the back of the smoke box. The cylinders are particularly nice with the sort of chrome coloured areas. Let's see, you've got the wheels which are separately painted, presumably before the tyres went on, so there's a really nice crisp join between the wheel disc and the tyre. The steps are separately painted and lined as well, as are these little toolboxes on top of the tanks. The buffer beams are nicely painted as well and we've got the running number there too, and look how beautiful the smoke box door looks with its painted hinges absolutely gorgeous. I'm such a fan of the LSWR livery and yet it looks quite a lot different to the Terrier that I've got in this livery. Yeah, it's a slightly different variation of the livery, I would say. Right, let's take a look at some of the details then. So we'll go back to the buffer beams and start here. So you have got the chain link couplings fitted and these are on a sprung hook so that these will work realistically, really good quality feature, always the case from Dapol. You have of course got the vacuum pipe to prefit on the front and that's because it might interfere with the opening of the smoke box door, that's why they didn't fit it. On the back that is fitted as you can see. We've got quality metal buffers which are sprung, let me show you that, yeah, very very stiffly sprung as well, so again these will probably be quite realistic in the way they operate. You've got separately fitted lamp brackets fitted to the running plate which look good, the smoke box door as I've already said is nicely detailed, and you've got this very fine smoke box dart fitted to it, and yes this part does open, it's quite easy to open actually. Um, although the modelling opportunities are relatively limited here because the interior is obviously not detailed. It's got the DCC socket there, which does make chipping of this loco much more convenient, or at least it would if the relevant tool had been included. The instructions talk about a DCC fitting tool, which allows you to hook onto this PCB and pull it out, but no such thing was included as far as I can tell. Not a huge deal, I guess you could just use some pliers to pull it out, but uh, it's not such a neat solution if you've got to use a tool for Dapol's so-called toolless DCC installation. So that's a little bit of an omission, unfortunately, but certainly no big deal. The handrails are painted into a chrome colour, and these are wire, so they're extremely sturdy. That looks great. And the area in front of the tanks around the smoke box area is incredibly detailed. You've got the little taps slash valves on the side of the smoke box here, Separately fitted levers as well, where you can see all of the hinges are separately painted. You've got what I assume are the clack valves. These are also separately fitted and separately painted. Looks absolutely incredible. And the tops of the tanks are similarly detailed with the water filler caps, the little toolboxes that I've already mentioned, and a plethora of other detail too, most of which is separately fitted. Just looks awesome. The safety valve area looks pretty decent as well, and around the other side of that you've got a separately fitted whistle, which again is a very, very nicely moulded piece. The chassis is fully detailed as well, you've got cylinder drain cocks and all of the linkage that operates those modelled as well. The coupling and connecting rods, as promised on the instructions, are indeed die cast parts and they look excellent as a result. Lots of detail on the chassis, including the sanding boxes complete with pipes, Really, really fully detailed wherever you look. Even the steps are fully detailed. Look at the definition on those. Looks really, really wonderful. The cab is also very impressive. I like these little air intake holes in the front and back of the cab. And the glazing looks particularly good and flush here. It looks realistic on the outside of the model, but also on the inside of the model. Very, very good glazing. 
The cab roof, as you can see, is not a fantastic fit, but that's because it is removable. And uh, it's just a couple of magnets which grab on to these nuts. <laughs> that's a bit janky dapple, what's going on there? And they're not sort of flushly fitted, which could explain why the top of the cab doesn't fit on 100% perfectly. Obviously, though, that's not a huge deal. This does mean, though, that you have good access to the cab for A, looking at it, I guess, and B, fitting crew, if that's something you want to do, but the cab is absolutely marvellous. So many separately fitted parts inside here alone. You can just tell that each of these controls, the reverser, the regulator, the brake, all of the little wheels, all separately fitted parts, and they all have marvellous relief. And that's not to mention the lighting that we have inside here as well, because as soon as you power this loco up, you'll get that LED or LEDs coming on. Absolutely marvellous. You've got the little grab rails around the cab doors, which look good and fine. And then around the back, you've got all of these separately fitted lamp brackets, which look great, good and straight as well. And more separately fitted handrails, which again are also nice and straight. It's an absolutely beautiful model. One of the nicest I think I've ever owned in O-Gage, and yet not all that expensive. I'm absolutely blown away by what Dapol have been able to achieve here. It is so much more complex than the 00 scale version. It's got so many more features, it weighs so much more, and yet it's only double the price. If only that was always true of O scale. Can you imagine that? An O scale A4 or something like that for just double the price of a, a 00 scale one. That would be amazing. In terms of the quality, generally it's been put together very, very nicely. I haven't spotted a single instance of visible glue, which is great. But if I had to be super critical, and obviously I do have to be, maybe there's some parts of the model which don't have the greatest finesse in the world. We've got the roof, which isn't a perfect fit, quite large gaps between some parts, such as the dome, I think that's a good example, and one or two slightly wonky parts, these clack valves on the side of the boiler, for instance, on both sides are a little bit on the wonk. Relatively minor things, but certainly worth bearing in mind. Anyway, we're gonna get this up onto the O-scale layout and we're gonna give it a test and also check out the mechanism. So stay tuned, let's get started. So there she is, Dapol's brand new B4 down onto the track, looking incredible. Yeah, I love this thing, the livery, the detail, the character that this Loco's got. It's just a gorgeous thing to own. So, so pleased with this one. Anyway, I filmed the initial performance test and running in, and I won't give you any spoilers about that for now. That's coming up in just a second. After that, I did a disassembly to look at the mechanism, and that's what I want to talk about now. Generally, the mechanism is quite a good one, and it's also a very interesting one. First of all, I noticed there was no visible pickups on display. Quite curious to see how the pickups work, so I got started undoing the base keeper plate screws. Removing the base keeper reveals that the front axle, interestingly enough, has three bearings fitted to it. I've never seen that before, but yeah, it does. And it also is free to rock. It's not sprung, but it does just rock left and right. Ordinarily, I might have said, oh, that's a bit of slop there, but the instructions do say that that rocking is intentional. You know, it's not some sort of quality problem. So yeah, that is supposed to be there. The rear axle has two bearings in more of a normal fashion and of course the driving gear, so this is the driving axle, and it's fixed, there is no slop on this one. Interestingly, the motor is visible between the frames and it looks like a really big, chunky, heavy motor for the size of the Loco, which is great to see. Pulling one of the axles out, you can see how the pickups work. So yeah, this is a plunger style pickup which is sprung against the wheel so that it maintains a good contact. Seems to work well, so no problem with that at all. Now, the instructions, as far as I could see, did not include information on how to remove the body, so I just kind of made it up as I went along. Turns out I got it right first time, so this is what you do if you want to do the same. Six screws on the base, all of them sort of along the running plate. The front screws are self-tapping, which is a bit disappointing. And actually, when I put one of those back in, it kind of busted the thread before I could tighten it up. So, uh, yeah, not great quality, unfortunately. Speaking of unfortunate omissions, I decided that I would remove the DCC decoder socket before removing the body. Again, that proved to be the right thing to do, so that's what you need to do. This system was only toolless in as far as the tool required to do this was not included. The instructions said that this tool was in the accessories bag, but of course the only thing in the accessories bag was the vacuum pipe. 
so I guess they forgot to include them. I ended up using some pliers, as you saw, to get this thing out. Not quite correct to call it toolless. I mean, if you need a tool in the first place, it's not toolless, but if they don't provide the tool, then it's definitely not toolless. Yeah, that's unfortunate. You can't grab that with your fingers either because it's just a bit too slippery and a little bit too far inside. So that's unfortunate. Clever system, but you've got to include the tool if it's going to be a clever system. Otherwise, it's just an annoying system that really stops you doing what should be very easy to do. Anyway, the body is now free to come off. And as you can see, interestingly, the running plate and the chassis are one and the same. They're all the same part, which is a great cost saving measure. Very clever bit of design here. It reveals that the motor has a flywheel fitted to it. That's a great quality feature. I'm liking this mechanism for the most part. You can see we have the two LEDs, one marked red, one marked yellow in the firebox. So yeah, it does have the lighting on it. You can get a better view of the coal loads here as well on the inside. So yeah, the coal bunkers are inside, not outside on the B4. And then the gauging is inconsistent. One of the axles came in at 28.97 and the other one came in at 29.35, so they're massively different. This could be intentional, I suppose, but I'm not sure why that would be desired. And over points, this thing does seem to clatter quite a bit, although to be fair to it, never has it derailed. So yeah, the mechanism's got one or two issues, one or two missing parts, well, one missing part, that DCC fitting tool, which is quite the omission. Not a problem if you've got some pliers, but it's not toolless as described. Right, so, decent mechanism. Let's move on and let me show you how the performance test went. Okay, moment of truth time. Dapple pulled off a great loco in terms of looks, but it's only a great loco if it runs well. So, first ever test. It's not been running yet, and I will run this in fully before drawing any conclusions, but let's try it forwards. I think that's forwards. Does the loco work? Here we go. No, nope, that's not forwards, but it doesn't matter. Ooh, it does work, and very, very smoothly as well. Let's try forwards. Oh, look at that, wow. How beautiful and smooth that is as well, straight out of the box. Gorgeous motion on the sides there, love those coupling and connecting rods. Have we got working lights? Yeah, even on relatively low power, I can see there is flickering inside the cab there. That is awesome. Right, what's the gearing like then? Because obviously these are not sports cars. So let's run it past at 50% speed. Here we go. Yeah, that doesn't seem too bad actually. Yeah, not racing along too much and still beautifully quiet even at that speed. That's awesome. Okay, how's the crawl initially then? Let's have a look. I'm just gonna really gently ease this up on the controller. Ooh. Oh yes. Excellent. So, <laughs> Dapol did it again, folks. It's a great looking loco. That's fair enough. But it's also a great running loco. Look at that. What a marvellous, marvellous piece of kit. I absolutely love this thing. Right. Well, let's really give it a chance to stretch its legs then. Let me send it over some points. See how it gets on over those. All right, so I apologize in advance for the usual faffing over the points. Other direction, there we go. Wow, perfect. How about in reverse? Let's give that a try. No problems, and this is an 040, so no matter how good the pickups are, they're gonna be quite limited, and yet it's not cutting out. Let's try it even slower this time. Perfect. That is absolutely amazing. Look at that. What a marvellous, marvellous looking loco. Okay, so I'm going to engage the shuttle system now and let's run this baby in. Okay, let's try it at 50. All right, here she comes. So beautifully smooth. And of course, I've got no concerns about this struggling over the tight curves because that's what the real thing was designed to do. So, yeah, sure enough. No issues whatsoever going around the tight curves. So it looks as though this Loco really is the full package. Marvellously detailed, feature packed. It's got all of Dapol's usual innovation in it. Nice, simple DCC installation. Lots of space for speakers, lights, sprung buffers, proper couplings. 
removable cab roof so that you can see the detail inside. It really is just a work of art and it runs beautifully and it's very, very reasonably priced. So yet again, I say well done Dapol. I'll leave this thing to run in and I'm going to enjoy it very, very thoroughly. And then when we come back, I'm going to test it again, see if the performance is any different after running this in. And then, of course, I'll couple it up to some wagons and we'll try it doing what it's born to do. And that is, of course, a little bit of shunting around. So mightily impressed so far. I'll see you in just a second. OK, I am back and that is running in complete. And yeah, it's a beautiful runner. Really, really nice and consistent. No issues now it's been running an hour or so. No dirty wheels causing cutouts or unreliable pickups causing the same thing. No, it's absolutely fine. Thanks to its enormous weight, the pulling power is fantastic at 1.2 newtons. That is the second most powerful loco in O-Gage that I own. Only less powerful than the 08 shunter from Dapol. Even the Helgen Class 05, which is heavier than this, is a weaker hauler so that just goes to show what crazy torque this loco has got and it does too let me put my fingers on the buffers and um, give it some juice look at that heavy loco turning its wheels as though there's no load there whatsoever it's absolutely amazing i don't have enough wagons by a long way to test what this loco is capable of so i've just set up four of them one of them has the double o scale b4 in it which is half the price that seems expensive compared with this O-scale one, given all the extra features and functionality this thing has. Yeah, it really is an incredible value model. But anyway, let's back up. Let's see what it looks like coupled up to some rolling stock. Look how slow it can go. Look at that crawl. Let's just do a little bit more of that crawl because it is just intense. Look at that. So incredibly smooth. Possibly, possibly the best running O-scale loco I've got. I don't remember any other of them sort of crawling quite this well straight out of the box. Right, let's go and couple. Oh, don't go too fast. This loco is capable of a, a real careful coupling, so I'm going to make the most of that. So I'm going to use the loco's chain link coupling just to check that that is functional. I'm famously quite bad at doing this, so if it takes a long time, there's no reflection on the loco. So let's give this a go. I'm using my dog dentistry set that I got on Amazon all those years ago. And I think I've got it. Gently does it. Okay, I think I got it. There we go. Right, forwards for the loco. Let's take it back over the points yet again. And let's see how it gets on with a load. I say a load, it's not going to be much of a load for this thing. Look at it, still able to crawl nicely with some wagons coupled. I tell you what, there is no way for this loco to be more fit for purpose than it is. Just look at that, on analog as well. Mightily impressed by the performance of this thing. Very reliable, not even cutting out, look at that crawl. Let's accelerate. Marvellously realistic in its performance. Love it. OK, let's traverse the points one final time. Let's keep it nice and steady. Trying to make it cut out, but it's not going to do it, I don't think. Although I've got the other controller set the wrong way because of the shuttle. No cutting out, though. Absolutely wonderful. There you go. Right, let's watch it run with its wagons, then. There she goes. All right, how are we going to get on around the tight curve? Let's see. Looking good so far. Oh, we've got buffalo up there, yeah. All right, hang on then. Okay, so the loco itself is capable of those very tight curves. But of course, once you start introducing wagons and such, then Buffalock is a problem. It's not really the Loco's fault, of course, because uh, you know it's perfectly realistic, and it's not like Double O where it can just have a longer coupling which pushes the buffers further away. Yeah, it's just the nature of the beast. So second radius is a little bit questionable with this. It's quite a long wheelbase Loco, I guess. I think backwards on the points, it would probably do the same thing then. But apart from that, it is handling the load very nicely, as you can see. 
and by no means struggling with this small rake of wagons. So it's a gorgeous loco, it looks great, it runs well too, which means that more or less this loco is the full package. Let's have some ratings then from this really wonderful new B4 Loco from Dapol. And as you can see across the board, this Loco is doing really, really well. The level of detail for me has to be five star. That cab interior detail is incredible. It's got metal sprung buffers, proper chain link couplings, lighting on the inside, gorgeous decoration, fantastic finish, loads and loads of separate details and other little parts absolutely marvelous a big five star massive well done for that the performance again is faultless even over the points this thing is perfectly good nice and smooth smooth at the high speeds great at a crawl lots of torque as well and pulling power to spare speaking of pulling power this thing should be able to haul around 16 coaches on straight and level track it's massively powerful, only less powerful than the 08 in O-Gage. Everything else I have is weaker than this, and that includes much, much larger locos. The mechanism is great, but I've given it four stars, so it loses one star because it wasn't clear how to get to the insides of this loco. The instructions didn't cover body removal as far as I could tell. The use of self-tapping screws, which sort of busted the thread almost immediately, not that great. No tool included for the DCC decoder socket. The instructions said one was included in the accessories bag and it wasn't. And the gauging is quite a bit off between the two axles. Maybe that's intentional. Doesn't seem to bring about any advantage though and it does seem to clatter a little bit over points. Apart from that though, obviously the mechanism is good. The motor is clearly great. It's got a flywheel on it as well, which is a good quality feature. Proper bearings on all of the axles, uh, pickups on all of the wheels as well. Nicely put together, good die cast chassis. Yeah, it's a good mechanism. The quality similarly is four star for me. Generally very, very good. The build quality is high. I did not see any glue on this. No scuffs in the decoration, no overspray in the paintwork. Yeah, it's really, really good quality. However, the fit of the roof isn't brilliant because of those weird nuts for some reason that are holding it on rather than perhaps a reciprocating magnet or metal piece. Uh, so yeah, that's not great. A few of the other parts, the fit of those isn't great either. Big gaps around the dome, slightly wonky pipe work here and there. These are minor issues though on an otherwise very high quality model. Value for money though, I am struggling to fault. At £213.78, this is cheaper than quite a few double O scale locomotives, and yet it's heavier than them, it has more features, more detail, and uh, I struggle to find a double O scale loco that expensive that runs this well as well. So overall, while it is quite expensive, £200 is a lot of money, you get exactly what you pay for and then some. So five star, marvelous value from Dapol. I can't believe that they've been able to pull this thing off at such a reasonable price. Helgen, take note. Overall then that is 9.40 out of 10 or a very well deserved grade of A. Into the logbook it goes where it is top. I've only done a couple of O scale reviews this year, locos at least. It's above the Wickham trolley and this is only about 65 pounds more expensive than the Wickham trolley and yet you get an awful lot more for your money with this loco. Both good though, although this one I can really highly recommend. It's gorgeous. Well folks, thank you so much for tuning in for yet another review. I really enjoyed this one and you know, a bit of quality, a bit of detail, a bit of thought and a decent price really can go a long way, can't they? And here they have just served this model so well. Yeah, it's marvelous. Really, really big fan of this B4 from Dapol. And if you want to try one out, like I say, I do have affiliate links down in the description for you. For now, though, I hope you've really enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for tuning in. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think of this. Have you got one? Which livery did you go for? If so, which one do you think looks the best? And what do you think of the model? Please do let me know all of this. For now, though, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you very, very soon with another video. All right, you take care, folks. Catch you on the next one.